Hello everyone, we're back on the last segment of EPA Days uh, London in the business track. The first talk we'll have of, uh, on this segment on the future of EPA management will be about EPI strategy for the latest on open source software and cloud native applications. For that, we will have Javier Perez, Chief Evangelist of Open Source and EPI Management at Akana by Pairforce Software. Hello, Javier, how are you? Are you able Good. to join and share your slide with us? Yeah, happy to be here. Let me just uh, make sure that uh, I have the presentation mode here on my slides and uh, we should be ready to go. How's yeah. everything going? Are you able to go full screen? Yeah, I think you can see That's it That's perfect. The stage is yours for 20 minutes. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Hey, a pleasure to be here, uh, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Javier Perez. I'm representing uh, Perforce uh, with our Akana uh, brand. Uh, we do API management. And, and I have something to, to share here with you about uh, I, I, some of the API strategies that you've been hearing uh, on this event and, and you know, in other events over the last few years. Uh, but combining that with what's the latest on, on technology, the latest on open source software, the open source stacks, uh, what's happening with what we now call cloud native applications. So a good kind of overall uh, uh, presentation on, on open source software, the latest technologies, and then how all of that comes together to uh, help you put together a good API strategy. So I'll talk about all those, those events. Uh, without further ado, let me just start with my uh, quick introduction. Uh, I've been in the uh, technology space for more than 25 years now uh, with roles on um, you know, solution architect, sales engineering at the beginning of my career and then into product management and, and some product marketing. Uh, what I've been doing uh, more recently in the last couple of years is advocacy. Um, uh, I'm a chief evangelist for um, Perforce for the Akana brand. Uh, also the open logic brand for for open source and and I love to do this I love to go and talk about technology uh, share the information that I gather from you know the different uh, experts from uh, working with other customers working with partners and, and share that with you so put all that that together into one place you can uh, reach out to me on my uh, I'm sharing here my contact details uh, Twitter LinkedIn, and so on. So we're happy to continue the, the conversation. So let's start with uh, what's going on in the innovation, right? When when you hear about the latest technologies, uh, everything has been built pretty much in the open, uh, right? Most of that it's open source. If not everything, at least the building blocks to build the, that innovation, it's, it's, it's done with open source software, right? So when we talk about augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, autonomous cars, all of that it's been built with open source software, right? I mean, of course, the, we're growing so much in terms of AI, machine learning, deep learning applications, uh, blockchain, uh, virtual assistants, right? Which is part of a kind of AI functionality. All of that is happening today. All of that is happening in the open. Uh, as I said, at least the building blocks. And guess how do we connect all of that? Of course, with APIs, right? Of course, with not not hundreds, actually not thousands, millions of APIs that help us kind of integrate all of that, right? So just give you a few numbers here, and and you know this is just to give you a, an idea of how big, huge is this space now in terms of open source, right? No one really starts uh, an application from scratch, right? You have hundreds, actually thousands and millions of libraries, packages that you can reuse, right? Sometimes, I mean, developers, if you are listening and you're a developer, you say, well, yes, I'm using all these dependencies, all these libraries. I don't even know exactly what they do, but are, they're needed for the functionality that, I, that I'm putting together, right? So things like uh, NPM for JavaScript, images, code, there are more than 1.7 million packages out there available for anyone, right? You, Maven for Java, PyPy for Python, and you can see all those numbers there. Nugget keeps growing now, all in open source, the C Sharp uh, um, libraries. Uh, and the numbers that you see below there, right? The number of new packages per day, that, that's amazing. I mean, I 
this actually this data is it's it's recent. You can see the source there at the bottom of the screen, uh, modulecounts.com. Uh, you can go today and you know see that there are even higher numbers. Um, so it's we are in a world that it's software, right? We're in a world where for the most part it's open source, and we're in a world where uh, APIs are connecting all of that. And, and for that, I have uh, this good slide with just three numbers to remember. Actually, you just have to remember 90, right? 90, 90, 90. Uh, according to different studies, again, I have the, the, the sources there at the bottom of the screen, more than 90% of companies are using open source, right? So there's some companies that don't even realize how much open source they're using, right? All their developers using, you know, open source, programming languages, open source frameworks, open source libraries. So some companies don't even realize how much open source has been used, but uh, a good uh, study tells us that more than 90% of the companies, more than 90% of the new uh, application code, uh, the code in the in new applications, it's also open source. Going back to what I was uh, mentioning earlier and, and the previous slide, right? You don't start from scratch, you use a lot of open source. Now, now some people might think, Oh, 90% seems to be too high. Uh, not really, right? Uh, there's uh, there's there's a saying that it's not there's nothing new under the sun, right? There's a lot of work that has been done, and you can just reuse, right? You uh, want to you know you do authentication, user and password. Well, there are plenty of uh, libraries that help you to do that. If you want to do encryption, plenty of uh, libraries you, uh, to to help you do that. So. Again, uh, the the use of open source it's it's becoming uh, you know more and more and more popular. And then the final uh, point there for any new, um, especially new developments, new uh, new code, new applications, more than ninety percent of uh, our developers are using APIs. Uh, you know, it's I was saying yesterday on a, on another talk that uh, it, it's like a snowballing, right? More people use APIs now. You need to know now. Do you have to go and consume more APIs, which helps you also go and create more APIs? And it's a snowballing. We have more and more APIs every day. And and you you might be thinking, well, yeah, but uh, you know, some technologies might not need more than others. Well, no. Uh, look at this. I mean, I mean, across the board, right? Open source and APIs on operating systems inside Linux, inside uh, iOS, inside the operating systems. And the programming languages, you know, security tools, artificial intelligence. We'll talk more about that in just a second. So what that brings us is to uh, the stacks. Uh, and you probably heard, well, you know, yeah, we're looking, we're looking to hire full stack developers. What do we mean with full stack? Well, uh, developers that know multiple technologies. What you see on the screen, just a, a few sample logos. Uh, all of these represent open source software. Uh, is how you can form your own stack, right? So you choose a Linux distribution, for example. You you, you choose uh, a kind of another infrastructure technology. Let's say uh, you know you're doing um, a container, Docker containers. Uh, you choose you know your database, your stateless. Uh, you use something to package that. You use. Uh, something for your front end. So you will be creating your own stack. Every Everyone creates their own stack. And that's what I'm trying to represent on this slide, right? Different boxes. Anyone can create their own stack. And the options are many. So, so let me let me, let me me show you a couple of examples. Just an example, right? Anyone can create their own stack. But on the left, you see uh, you know, the use of Ubuntu for the, for, for the Linux distribution. If you are developing on Python and Java, well, you might be using Maven and PyPy. Uh, you are storing on a, you know, on a distributed way, so you want to use Hadoop, and then you want to stream that somewhere else, right? So you might be using uh, Apache Spark. Uh, if you're using an application, uh, you're working on AI, machine learning, deep learning, well, you might be using something like TensorFlow, Pandas, Apache Arrow, and of course, everything uh, with uh, Git repos, right? So that's a simple sample of a stack, right? Everyone is now working on stacks. Uh, important to mention that um, um, the example of Apache Spark, which by, by the way is becoming so popular, especially because of all those um, AI machine learning applications, but also because of the functionality to do, uh, you know, kind of an analytics engine or uh, kind of a streaming functionality, streaming data. Uh, you can basically uh, integrate Apache Spark with anything else, right? With other data technologies, which 
you know, I don't call it databases anymore, or other data technologies, and that's what it represents on the image there. So that's just one example that is happening today. If you're not using Apache Spark, uh, you know, will be interesting to go and, and check it out. If you're already using, you will basically just agree with me that you can have multiple stacks and you can easily integrate via APIs, of course, uh, with other technologies. Uh, here's another example. Uh, uh, you know, happen to use CentOS for, for Linux distribution. You know, CentOS is, is going away, end of life at the end of this year. That's another talk, uh, but important to check it out. Uh, and then you can use technologies like Kafka, for example, and then something else for uh, using Node.js and using JavaScript for your front end, right? And maybe you want to uh, configure everything, have all your um, uh, scripts using Ansible or using something else, right? Chef, Puppet, other things. Uh, the example on the right is when you use the technologies to do the streaming and also storage. So it can go from something like Apache Kafka to Apache Spark to then, you know, another data technology like Cassandra, for example. So the, the, the options are many. And, you know, not expecting you to, to read all these logos, but this is just a quick example of the landscape what the Cloud Native Foundation uh, is tell, it's, it's telling us that it's out up there. Right? Actually, there are a lot more, uh, but there's so much software to choose from and create your stack. And that brings me to the point of uh, Cloud Native. But by the way, I'm just circling there, uh, Akana, company that I'm representing that it's also listed there on, on API gateways and we do a few more things. Uh, but this brings us to the use of containers, right? What uh, There are different definitions, but when people refer to a kind of cloud native applications, uh, it refers to, for the most part, that they are uh, containerizing their applications. Applications are in containers. And as you grow those applications and, and you know, you're scaling them, you need a way to management uh, to manage them and to orchestrate all those containers, right? And you know, if they're stateless uh, containers, if you are managing uh, stateful applications, uh, uh, you need a way to to help you with that. Like the most popular now, of course, is Kubernetes, right? And when you're using Kubernetes, uh, you want to use something called Kubernetes operators, which are basically going back to all these stacks all these uh, technologies, open source technologies for the most part, that now they are uh, adjusting to work on a Kubernetes environment. And that's what is called Kubernetes operators, you know, uh, especially stateful applications, you know, things like Spark, Cassandra, Redis, MongoDB, MySQL, the, the ones that you, I show you there on the, on the, with the logos, um, you know, it has to provide a little bit more functionality to, to work properly on a Kubernetes environment. So the, there's, some, there's something new here, right? The, we are seeing a, a grow on these Kubernetes operators, which, you know, everyone is, if everyone is, or there's a significant grow on the use of containers and the use of Kubernetes for orchestration, well, it just makes sense to have the rest of the technology properly working on a Kubernetes environment. And that's what it refers to Kubernetes operators. So here's an example. Uh, uh, just to show you what a sample of a cloud native ecosystem or a cloud native environment for your APIs, right? At the end of the day, everything is uh, exposed, everything is connected or integrated with, with APIs. So you see from, from the bottom up, you know, you have your infrastructure, you could be on a cloud, you could be cloud, a private cloud, dedicated cloud, you can be on-premise, you can be in a virtual environment. Then the next layer, of course, is your operating system. You see a good known logos there. And then you want a way to orchestrate that. I just mentioned Kubernetes. Uh, there are other open source options and commercial options. Uh, for example, Ranger or OKD, which is the open source version of OpenShift. Uh, but all both Ranger and OKD are basically based on, on Kubernetes. And then your containers could be Rocker containers, Podman containers. It's basically the same comparable container format. Uh, we see a, a grow on, on the use of Podman, uh, a little bit lesser on on, on the Docker containers, but we're talking about the same here. Uh, I just mentioned the operators and then your code, right? That will be an example of a kind of a cloud native application. And then what do you want to do with that application, with that code? Well, go and communicate with a mobile app, right? With a website, with, a, with another service, with an IoT, with a partner. And that box that you see there in the middle, 
uh, that's when it's important to secure your APIs, right? You are going to connect, you are going to go and expose data, you are going to in, uh, in, in, interact. You need that layer of security on your APIs. And there are many different ways to do this, right? Just to show you here really uh, quickly, the key here is to have portability, right? So if you are looking at that API management solution, uh, API management could be uh, you know, as a platform as a service. It could be on-premise, everything on-premise. You can have the, the API gateway separate uh, in the case of hybrid, you know, something on the cloud, something on-premise. Uh, or you can have it in multiple clouds, across multiple clouds, your gateway in one place, your API platform uh, in another place. So uh, the key here, uh, as we start talking about the strategy, is to have portability on how you architect uh, your security when you are exposing or when you're ready to expose all that, uh, all those applications and all that data that comes from those stacks and those new modern uh, technologies that I was just mentioning earlier. So talking about this uh, strategy, um, you know, we've been seeing this on this conference and other conferences. We talk about modernization, right, for your APIs. We're talking about, uh, you know, mon modernization could be just to kind of break the monolithic, right? Break that big application that we've been using for years, start, you know, doing microservices, start creating APIs, and you, you break it. That's your API strategy. You can go and connect to the mainframe. There are more than more tools today. Uh, uh, we are kind of offered something called Sola, which you know, basically builds an API in, in, in seconds for you to, to connect to, to mainframe applications, things like uh, DB2 and, and uh, COBOL applications. So, you know, go create APIs and consume that important data that is on the mainframe and it will continue to be in the mainframe, right, for a long time, especially in the financial services industry. Um, on the headless architecture, I think all of you know this, right? The the the, the idea of, well, let's, let's do API feature first, right? Let's put all the functionality on APIs. We can we can worry about the, U, the UI, the, the GUI later. Let's put first everything on APIs, everything very granular architecture. And, and with that, you know, we can integrate, we can automate, we can do a lot of things. And then of course, the, the strategy on your APIs for new technologies, uh, you know, create your API ecosystem, right? You know, put a, have a, available a portal you know, bring more APIs, allow your partners and your customers to go and use your APIs and bring more, create more APIs, you know, to kind of share all of that. That will be a key part of your strategy. Another one is obviously, as I mentioned earlier, just go pick your, your stack, right? And making sure that you integrate based on APIs, all that technology that, that you create on your stack. And, and then you can go with new technologies, right? AI, serviceless, edge. And I'll talk about a little bit more about that in just a second, right? So, you want that layer of security. You want that uh, uh, lifecycle application uh, management platform, right? API lifecycle management and platform. Um, you could see you could see through the bullet points there. Um, don't have enough time to go through all the details, but that's when you're talking about the strategy. You want the security for for that. So when you're looking at the strategy, and and that's something that we call kind of being an API smart uh, or API smart strategy. Across the life cycle of your API, uh, you know, when from development to publishing and consumption, uh, you need to think about a, a, a strategy uh, and a smart strategy. Yes, I talk about API management. Uh, this brings uh, and I uh, focus on security. Uh, obviously, you have to focus also on your execution and 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 support for your environments, and of course, the vision to go and try the new technologies that are out there. Right. Uh, someone said that uh, the future is here is just unevenly distributed. Right. There are a lot of companies doing something very innovative. Maybe some of you are not at that point, but you can have that vision to go and work with technologies like this. Right. So just to show you a couple of more examples, you know, seems that more and more people are doing DevOps. Right. They are using technologies for continuous integration and continuous delivery. You can see all the logos there are uh, actually happen to be open source software that everyone is using across for DevOps, right? And there are more, of course. And how do you integrate this? APIs again, and you have to secure those APIs. How about uh, machine learning, AI, data, right? This is coming from FirstMark. There's just uh, the, the ecosystem that just they just did recently in uh, September. Um, 
And, uh, you know, I don't expect you to see that, but just to give you an idea of how much technology are out there for AI and, and data technologies. Uh, when we talk about AI, uh, same thing, right? It's across the life cycle. So from collecting the data and organizing the data, which uh, in some cases it takes most, you know, 70, 80% of the time to defining the models, creating the models, training the models, and then deploying and maintaining that, you know, across that life cycle, you have multiple options and you can see the logos there. That's what is happening today, right? And there are more options there. Most of that it's open source. Obviously, there are also some good commercial applications for that. And the key here is, you know, all of this has to be integrated with APIs. So on the three examples that I just gave you for DevOps, for, for the creating your own stack, technology stack, or for AI machine learning, uh, at the end of the day, again, you are exposing everything you're doing to a website, to a mobile app, to a partner, to you know IoT and others, right? And you need that layer. You need that API management to make sure that you think on security first. Uh, I mean, you know, with all the the news that we hear today in terms of ransomware and uh, hacking and uh, leaks and all of that, security is very important, right? And you have to have that other layer of defense. You know, one thing is your network security, and other thing is your layer of defense with your APIs. I know I have uh, we have a lot of here, uh, many people here in the audience uh, are working on financial services uh, uh, in the financial services industry. I just wanted to give you a, a quick summary of the new technologies, especially uh, around AI and machine learning, deep learning that I've seen on financial services. Uh, how do I get this data? I actually, a little secret here for you. I actually went to um, look for job descriptions, you know, the top eight uh, largest financial institutions in the world. You know, they're looking for developers. They're looking for architects. They're looking for uh, API expertise. They're looking for AI expertise. And as part of the skills and the requirements, they list their uh, their technologies that they use. So that's how I, come up, I came up with this list. Uh, this is what you know, financial services industry and many other industries, of course, are using today. Everything again, you know, you need the skills, but everything again, it's based on your APIs. And another big part of the strategy, of course, is, you know, build, keep growing your ecosystem, right? You know, there's so much to do there in terms of adding more functionality from chatbots, chatbots to, you know, image recognition to inventory optimization, you name it, you know, grow your API ecosystem. So just to finish the talk here, uh, you know, a few takeaways for you. Uh, when you think about the strategy, think about the technologies that are there. You, you go and explore, experiment with new technologies. You keep keep up with the technology. Everything we know, it's, it's based on APIs and you have to secure your API. You have to plan your strategy for that, right? So, you know, there are new stacks all the time. Um, you know, DevOps AI are the kind of leading the pack in terms of um, new new technologies. Um, you know, design and manage your APIs with security in in mind. Very very important. And of course, you know, you go and and do you know go for a for a good strategy. It could be around modernization. It could be about around this headless architecture that I mentioned, or or it could be just about new technologies. Uh, keep keep up with the the technology. So just to finish. Uh, you know, if, if you go to the uh, Akana boot, uh, if you register there, you um, uh, you can win a $200 Amazon gift card. Uh, you, we also are share, sharing those uh, Einstein stickers that are very popular. Uh, and with that, well, thank you very much. And I, I think we have a couple of minutes for, for questions, if you have any questions. Yeah, we have two minutes. One question about the open source strategy in API management. What is okay to keep open source? What's, let's say, um, not okay in a sense and where it's to where it's better to rely on a, on a vendor? Yeah, good, good question. Uh, and really, really quick. Um, one, one important thing in terms of the technology is the support, right? If your team, if your group doesn't have the necessary skills, uh, I mean, I'm, we're using open source anywhere, right? Uh, and you use just community support, right? You know, you, you, there are sources of information you're using. Uh, if you feel that that you don't have the, the team doesn't have the skills it will it's good to go and and get the support not necessarily by the way not necessarily a commercial version could be still open source for the commercial version of the open source uh, or could be a company that offers you the support uh so that that's one piece and then the other piece is in terms of uh 
keeping up with some of the technologies, right? And and having a clear a clear roadmap. That's when you might want to. Well, if if that's important for you, if IT compliance uh, in part of your compliance is to to have kind of an official uh, backing in terms of release lifecycle, in terms of support, then you might want to try uh, you know some kind of commercial version. Yeah. Okay. And we just we just reached our twenty five minutes uh, that we have together, Javier. Thank you very much. It was really insightful. And sometimes we forget the, how open source is really embracing let's say the whole cloud native infrastructure and and the whole stack so yeah thank you for this reminder uh, my pleasure